like to write a story? Hi, my name is Liz Shanks, and I'd like to welcome you to this special episode, this Easter episode of Penguin Storytime. Our book today is The Easter Egg by Jan Brett. All over the world, holidays like Easter have traditions, special celebrations that add to our family's enjoyment of this special day. And with Easter, one of the loveliest is the arrival of the Easter Bunny, who, on Easter morning, leaves baskets for children. Have you ever had to wait until you're older to do something? Maybe go on a ride alone in an amusement park? Ride a two-wheeler bike? Go to a sleepover at a friend's? Well, that's what happens to Hoppy the rabbit in our story, The Easter Egg by Jan Brett. Please pay special attention to the borders on Jan's beautiful book. It's filled with creatures and pussy willows. Watch those pussy willows because something very special will happen to them at the end. And also pay special attention to the beautiful flowers of spring. Violets, jack-in-the-pulpits, bluets, cowslip, Virginia bluebells, phlox, and trout lilies. They're all over the place. Jan also had live models for the rabbits that you will see. Their names were Squiggles, Crystal, Lefty and Righty, Tiki, Traffic, and Nibbles. And now, Jan Brett's The Easter Egg. Cheer up! Cheer up! Spring is here. Time to start on my first Easter egg, Hoppy said. Each year, the bunny who decorated the winning egg got to help the Easter rabbit hide the eggs on Easter morning. Hoppy had been dreaming about being that bunny all year long, and now it was time to get started. Everywhere Hoppy looked, rabbits were working on dazzling eggs. I need an amazing idea, he thought. Hoppy spotted Flora Bunny planting spring wildflowers in her eggs. The Easter Bunny will love those colorful flowers, he thought, and started picking flowers for his egg. Here's a basket for your flowers, Hoppy, Flora said. Chop, chop, scrape, scrape. Hoppy spied Buster Birch carving a magnificent wooden egg. I wish I had some wood for my egg, he wished out loud. Here you go, Hoppy, Buster Birch said, and he put a smooth round piece of wood in Hoppy's basket. Thank you, Buster, Hoppy said. Hoppy was hopping along when the smell of sweetness led him out of the woods and straight to the chocolate egg that Aunt Sassyfras was decorating with creamy frosting squiggles and bows. Hello, Hoppy, she said and she put some chocolate squares in his basket. Hippity hop, Hoppy said. I'll make the Easter rabbit a chocolate egg so sweet it will make his whiskers tingle. Then Hoppy saw Granny Irene decorating one of her fabulous story eggs. First, she traced a design on the egg with a special tool. Then she dipped the egg in pots of yellow, green, orange, and red dye adding to the design each time. Hoppy couldn't believe his eyes. I'll never make an egg that beautiful, he told Granny Irene. She smiled. Try, she said, giving him one of her special tools. Hoppy was hopping by Hans von der Rabbit's garden when he spotted an extraordinary egg. Hans was painting a portrait of the Easter Rabbit, so real that he looked alive. Fantastic, Hoppy exclaimed. Thank you, Hoppy, Hans said. Why don't you make a painting on your egg? He gave Hoppy pots of paint and a fine brush. As Hoppy bounced along, a loud boing nearly knocked him off his feet. It was a whirling, twirling mechanical egg. Whoa, Hoppy said. That's an unusual egg. Would you like to make one? Roberto asked. Hoppy tried hard, but the harder he tried, the more parts and pieces piled up around him. Thank you, Roberto, sighed. 
but I think I'd better make the egg that's right for me. Hoppy hopped back to the woods and lay down under a tall tree to think. Making a beautiful egg is harder than I imagined, he thought. I guess I don't have to win. I just want to make an egg I'm proud of. Suddenly, the woods rang with the squawking of birds sounding an alarm. Mother Robin swooped down, calling wildly as if she couldn't decide where to go. An egg tumbled out of Mother Robin's nest. And inside the perfect blue egg was a baby robin that needed its mother to keep it warm until it hatched. Hoppy knew what he had to do. He sat down carefully and covered the blue egg with his soft, warm fur. I'll take care of you the best I can, he whispered. Relieved, Mother Robin chirped and settled down on her other two eggs. Hoppy never left the robin's egg. If it was sunny and warm, he carefully turned the egg in its nest of moss. If it was rainy and cold, he kept the egg covered and dry. At night, wild animals passed by. Hoppy crouched down and stayed hidden in the ferns. Often he heard strange noises coming from above. But Hoppy didn't run away. Every day, the rabbits worked on their eggs. Tadpoles turned into frogs. Buds swelled into leaves, and Easter came closer and closer. Finally, it was time for the rabbits to take their eggs to the glen. They had forgotten all about Hoppy, who was quietly sitting on the blue egg under the tall tree in the woods. Early the next morning, the rabbits waited for the Easter rabbit. Suddenly, a beautiful wagon rolled toward them out of the mist and stopped. The Easter Bunny stepped down from the wagon and admired the decorated eggs one by one. You have brought me the most beautiful eggs in the world, but a very special one is not here, he told them. The rabbits were puzzled. Whose egg could it be? Fill my wagon with your wonderful eggs, he said. When I return, I will show it to you. And he disappeared into the woods. He came back with Hoppy, looking scruffy and bedraggled. Hoppy has an amazing egg to be proud of, the Easter rabbit told them. He has kept Mother Robin's egg warm and safe until her baby bird hatched, and she could take care of it. The Easter rabbit placed the empty blue shell in the place of honor atop the wagon. Now they were ready to go. The rabbits cheered for the egg that had surprised them all. It's our best Easter ever, Hoppy, they shouted. Then the brave little bunny and the Easter rabbit rode off together to hide the eggs for girls and boys to find on Easter morning. Boys and girls, this was a splendiferous book. It's wonderful. It has great illustrations and a wonderful story, but it has something more than that. It has, I think, a lesson for all of us. When Hoppy impulsively does the compassionate, selfless deed, he's not thinking of decorating his egg or winning the contest or delivering the Easter baskets. He's thinking of that tiny blue egg and the helpless mother robin. He's being selfless. It takes time and love to make something beautiful like the gorgeous eggs made by the other rabbits who shared with Hoppy. But Hoppy learned the most beautiful gift of all was himself, giving his time to somebody that needed him. Maybe you could be a bit like Hoppy, not just on a special day like Easter, but each day. How, you might ask, can I do that? Maybe you could try doing a special small good deed each day. It will make you feel good, just as it did Hoppy. 
I want to thank all of you for joining us today for this special Easter episode of Penguin Storytime featuring The Easter Egg by Jan Brett. And remember, you are what you read, so please pick up a book today. <laughs>